Hello, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jacob Williams and I'm going to be talking to you about potential futures. Right, so on the agenda tonight is uh, going to be a little bit about me, uh, the present day as we know it, a bit about science, uh, equality, technology, sustainability, my proposed policies and a little bit of sort of Q&A at the end. So, who am I? Not that person. Uh, <laughs> my name is Jacob Williams, I was brought up on a farm in Farm of Cornwall, hence the picture, and I gained a high 2-1 in psychology and sociology from Bath Spa University. Um, so, my intentions. Uh, I've been awarded an unconditional offer from the London School of Economics uh, to study my Masters in Science uh, in Sociology, Contemporary Social Thought. It's ranked fourth in the world for sociology, and I will then go on to study my PhD uh, with the topic of transition from capitalist society towards a development-oriented, egalitarian, resource-based society. That's quite the mouthful. Um, so, intentions continued. I actually want to work towards becoming uh, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Uh, my party of choice would be Labour. Um, you'll see later on why. Uh, the focus of my policies would be equality, sustainability, scientific and rational thought, as well as technology. Uh, I want to be the UK, I want the UK to be at the forefront of science and human rights uh, within the entire world, and we should be setting the example for the rest of the world to follow. So, the present. We currently live on a planet where the top 10% own roughly 75% of the world's wealth. Uh, social mobility has stayed at the same level since 1970, whilst the UK is one of the lowest levels of social mobility out of all of the advanced nations. Public science spending in the UK currently stands at 0.65 of the GDP, which compared to the G8 nation average of 0.8%, that's uh, quite low really. Um, the number of British businesses fell by 20,000 in 2014, so that's 0.9%. Um, the estimated total corporate tax net gap is 4.7 billion um, each year, which is a massive amount of money that we could really be using. Um, and I find it quite interesting from a psychological perspective that when we actually meet someone, we automatically perceive ourselves as being different to someone as opposed to being similar. Uh, that's mainly due to the current society that we live in. Uh, it's very individualistic and competitive, so we all see it as us and them. The economic system by which we currently live is in fact not economic at all. It's very uneconomic. Um, we live by a boom and bust cycle, whereby at the top suffer the least during a period of bust. Furthermore, if we paid all of the money in the world bank to the central banks, we would still have a massive debt to pay off. I mean, that's just crazy, right? You know, the way it works is that um, with banks, uh, obviously you have the principal, which is the money in the actual supply, and then you have the interest on top. The interest isn't actually in the supply, and in order for capitalism to survive, you have to keep paying on, off the debt with the money that's already in supply, so you're always going to be paying off debt. So, in terms of what's actually happening in the world right now, we're going to get to the point where we won't actually have any money left to pay off the debt. So, for example, the UK now is actually in debt of 1.8% of its GDP, which means that we're never ever going to pay it off now because we don't produce enough money in the country in order to pay off our debts. Um, the Economist is quite a good thing. Um, I believe when I last looked at it, the world debt, and I believe this is only public debt, so this is only government debt, is actually 54 trillion at the moment, which is <laughs> just an obscene amount of money. Um, so it, it's just crazy that we actually live in a system now, where, which a lot of people don't realize that we are just always in debt. So, as I said before, in order for capitalism to survive, money has to continue to circulate, otherwise there will be no growth, even though growth is actually a farce because we're already paying off debt after debt after debt. So Friedel said, anyone who believes that infinite growth is compatible with a finite planet is either a fool or an economist. Which is very, very true because economists seem to have this wonderful notion that we can always grow and we can always prosper by printing loads more money as well as banks creating a lot more debt. Um, 
Furthermore, uh, products have a limited lifespan due to planned obsolescence. A lot of people also don't know this, but one of the prime um, companies is Apple, where they hold back technology and they bring out products every year where they change the tiniest thing possible and they make it seem as though it's uncool not to have the, the newest thing possible. Um, again, you've got the commodification of absolutely everything, even natural resources. So even though no one really owns the natural resources, you've got companies that, yeah, they should get paid for extracting the resources, but they don't actually own the resources. The resources are everyone on the planet. So laissez-faire or free market economics, it's always sort of advocated by a lot of economists, but it's no longer free because you've got corporations that already have money, that already have influence within this world, and if you've got someone who wants to start off a new business, then they just have the impossibility of doing that because how are they going to compete with someone that does it cheaper, um, probably more effective, and using um, like having the most resources too. Right, so this illustration here shows that how many Earths we would require if we all lived as other individuals within different nations. So if we all lived as Bangladeshis or Costa Ricans, we would have to have 1.4 planets. So we'd have to have our own planet as, long, as well as an extra 0.4. Uh, furthermore, if you look at India and Nepal, you'd have to have almost two planets. Uh, Uganda and France, 2.5 planets. And then finally, of course, uh, the United States, which you would actually have to have 4.1 planets. And it just seems absurd that uh, because of the way that they operate, it's all about consumption. It's all about hoarding as much as you possibly can. And you can see that by the way that that superpower shows you know, they consume so much on a day in, day out basis, and yet you've got over a billion people starving every day. Right, time to get positive. <laughs> I love that photo, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> no one's ever that happy, no one! Uh... <laughs> right, so, science. Good old trusty science. Uh, it's never less dumb. Um, does anyone actually subscribe to I Love Fucking Science? <laughs> it's a brilliant group and I absolutely adore it, you know. It just ranges, it's just everything science and you've got like so many cool things like I think I saw the other day of, um, there were some people that realised that ants who they fed milk to would turn white. So what they did, they started um, putting food colouring in different drinks and making them turn like green, yellow, red. It's just things like that, as well as uh, the recent discovery of an exoplanet, um, I believe, in Kepler. I can't remember what the numbers are, but it's in the um, habitable zone, um, and you know, it could be a place that, if we actually manage to do really good space travel, it could be a place that we could move to. Um, I currently read a book called The Geek Manifesto by Henderson. It notes that all facets of society actually have the ability to um, have the same amount of scrutiny as science. So this includes politics, government, education, environment, law. There's just so many within um, society that you can apply scientific and rational thought to. So throughout history, we have discovered more through scientific and rational thought than any other way of thinking. Uh, even throughout religion, it's always sort of been quite dogmatic, whereas within science, we're always being pragmatic about uh, the fact that if we are wrong, and we're proven wrong, then we'll sort of move on, rather than, you know, always being sort of like, we're right, rather than sort of moving on. Um, so, yeah, it's helped us understand the physical world around us, um, including, you know, obviously Big Bang Theory, you know, we can't actually measure it, but, you know, it's pretty good uh, theory. So, I firmly believe that along with the study of society, that we will never truly understand these phenomena of psychology, you know, how the human brain works. We'll always try and, you know, learn about the physical world from physics, from chemistry, from biology. But when it actually comes down to trying to think of what is correct within the human mind, because we're all so different, and we all act so differently, it's the same as society. Society is always changing, and you can 
can never really put it down to one theory. Um, so within the study of humans, particularly in be the behavioural sense, um, the application of psychology will uh, allow us to improve society depending on the findings that we discover. So like I said, you know, we'll find something about how someone behaves. Um, so for example, the way that we currently behave uh, in an individualistic competitive environment is due to the fact that society around us is individualistic competitive. And humans are incredible because we're the most adaptive species on the planet. You know, if we are put in a place where we collaborate and enjoy one's company, where it's just going to continue to grow like that. And it's the, you know, as I said, it's the same today. So this can include motivation, incentive, emotional needs, education, the list really goes on. So, sociology. Um, a lot of people that think that sociology is a DOS subject and that it's not applicable in the real world, but the last time I checked, so sociology is the study of society, and that is the real world, so <laughs> I don't think many people have a leg to stand on, um, because not only does it look at the way the structures affect society, uh, but also how individuals can create their own world as well. Um, in addition, much of sociology actually uses a lot of statistical techniques, just like any other science, so why would it not be as uh, reputable as other sciences? Challenge! Right, one of my old uh, college lecturers used to do this with me and my classmates and I want you to try and think of something that doesn't relate to sociology. Um, it's really, really quite hard. Does anyone have any guesses? No? See, it's, it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, even like, oh, I don't know, it's like... I can't even think of anything. Grass, you know, how does that... Taking, taking your shoe off. Taking your shoe off. <laughs> but uh, taking your shoe off is like an individual who's part of society who's taking the shoe off. More, more so, people have created shoes to put on their feet to walk around. That's, it's, it's, like, I could be really facetious and just be like, hmm, I'll just find somewhere around it. But it's true, you know, a lot of people within sociology, they actually study the most sort of, well not in the Vegas, but also the most specific things ever. Um, it's re it really is an applicable uh, subject. So, equality. Uh, Wilkinson and Pickett, the spirit level, why equality is better for everyone. It's one of the best books I've ever read and it's really come under criticism lately because of the, um, the science that they used, <coughs> the statistics that they used, the fact that they occasionally missed out a couple of countries. Um, a lot of people seem to think that they were making it so that it would fit their hypothesis. Um, but at the end of the day, I really feel, and you can really see it, but inequality isn't great for everyone. You know, it really just helps the people at the top. Um, so they used data from the World Bank and the UN, you know, they're credible sources. Um, and like I said, inequality affects all facets of society. Um, inequality is Far from just looking at wealth and income, you know, you're looking at uh, inequality within race, inequality within gender, um, as well as uh, inequality within people's education standards, um, you know, sort of what people have access to. And it just really seems as though a collaborative society would be able to give access to um, a lot of resources for everyone, not just the few. So, whilst there was not a direct causation that inequality create, creates most of the ills within society, it's more of, um, sorry I can't think, uh, correlation, um, but a more equal society in every sense of the world, as I said previously, will give everyone a chance to thrive, not just the few. So, more unequal societies tend to have higher homicide rates, um, more mental illness, more unemployment, along with a lot of others. So, in regards to higher homicide rates, those where there is greater inequality, um, you see the people at the bottom tend to be causing the most homicides because of the situation that they are in. If they were, if they had the opportunity to do whatever they wanted in terms of being intellectual, having access to resources, why would they feel the need to kill people? Um, and it's the same with mental illness, particularly in depression. Depression has just continually um, rose, rise since, um, you know, as capitalism has 
become stronger and stronger. So, I firmly believe that everyone is an intellectual as they accumulate different knowledge throughout their life course. So, you know, you can just imagine someone who's a plumber, they have different knowledge to me who, you know, I study sociology and, um, you know, people that study mathematics have different ideas to people that study history. And, you know, at the end of the day, if we all sort of collaborate and use all of our strengths, we won't really have any weaknesses because we'll have all areas covered. So, the commonality between all of us is not just the typical cliche of being human, although it is, but the fact that we are all different. So if you can grasp the idea that we're similar because we're all different, it's quite a fabulous way of thinking, but I really appreciate diversity within society, but if we can collaborate, then like I said before, we'll be able to cover all areas. Um, additionally, life is a struggle for everyone. So. Be empathetic towards your common man. You know, they're having their own struggles in life. They're struggling to pay bills. They're struggling to learn it for education. They're just like, everyone's really struggling. So, you know, kind of just work towards um, being empathetic towards um, and other people. So, technology, one of my favourite things. Um, right, imagine a life without many of the things that we use to day in, day in, day out. It seems impossible, right? Just like the you know, your smartphones, even just little things like, you know, a toaster or a washing machine or just, you know, all those things like the lights that we have here, you know, they were discovered years and years ago, but they've improved our life vastly. Um, also, many of the jobs uh, currently, as well as the ones uh, in the future, will eventually become obsolete because of technological advances. Like, you look at self-service counters, um, you know, you've got ideas like cars being driven by AI, you know, taxi drivers are going to be out of um, a job, um, bus drivers are going to be out of the job, you know, just so many jobs are going to be completely obsolete because of these technological advances. Furthermore, a lot of the technological advances we can achieve are restricted by the monetary system because people don't see it as a valid decision because we are restricted by money and we can only spend money on you know, things that people really need. Although a lot of the things that, for example, we, with the bailouts, you know, we paid like 700 billion pounds to the banks and what do they do? They just completely screwed us over again. So it's, it's really difficult to just sit and watch uh, our society just sort of you know, destroy itself from within. Alright, so now to the fantastic ideas. Uh, currently, we've um, they've discovered or started working towards solar power roads, which give multiple multi-purpose solutions to both energy and safety. So as you go along, you've got these LED lights, and say for example, um, you're on a road and someone has an accident, then you could have the someone at the other end putting messages on the road to tell you to slow down. There is an accident. Um, along with other things, but they say that if the whole of America used solar power of roads, then they would be able to power their entire country. And that's phenomenal just from solar power of roads, let alone all your windmill energy, your geothermal energies, um, tidal power, wave power. It's, it's really quite um, interesting. So this is one of another favourites of mine. So windmill powered street lights. So as you can see, you've got the vertical windmills as opposed to uh, the horizontal ones that go like that. So if you imagine the cars just driving past there, and you know as you drive past, uh, cars sort of push wind out of the way. And therefore, if you had oodles of cars going through there, they would power the windmills. So just from people transporting themselves from A to B, you'd be able to uh, not only power their street lights, but a lot of other things. And I kind of think that they look really aesthetically pleasing as well. Um, rather than, I know a lot of people think that wind farms look completely ugly, but I think that they personally look really good. Um, but those, you know, they're sort of like a compromise. Um, and it's powered by something that we're doing every day. Personally look really good. Um, but those, you know, that's sort of like a compromise um, and it's powered by something that we're doing every day. 
Another thing is sort of farming. So obviously being from a farming background, it kind of interests it interests me. Uh, so it's finding ways, innovative ways of growing, cultivating, and gathering food. Um, you know, sort of ideas like here we go hydroponics. Um, so they don't actually use any earth. Uh, instead, they have a constant water flow coming through here, but they um, they use uh, significantly less water because whatever water just sort of drains past, they go and they pump it through again. Um, and it's the same with this. So if you can imagine on an extreme scale of a massive farm tower, and at the top you'd have the plants growing that need the most water, and then as you get sort of like trickle down um, at the plants at the bottom that use the least water. So it's just so innovative ideas like that, where obviously the population is growing at a vast level. So why can't we use these innovative ideas? And one of the best things as well is that you need less GM crops, which obviously affects the earth and the growing and a lot of other things too. This is one of my other favourite ones, although Leandro is probably <laughs> I it. But um, 3D printers, um, particularly com contour uh, crafting. So um, if you can imagine sort of like a massive 3D printer uh, printing those through. Um, and I believe I read uh, an article that said that they can build 10 houses a day worth £3,000. So um, until we start using wood in a sensible way, I think it's maybe good for uh, sort of commons and houses and stuff like that. Um, but the possibilities are endless. You know, they're, they're really working towards using different materials, almost like ink inkjet cartridges, um, that are more sustainable. Um, and obviously, concrete's not the most sustainable thing in the world. Um, but we can work towards, and we're always developing, this is one point, we're always going to be changing, we're always going to be improving through our rational thought. So sustainability is a big issue at the moment, um, and as I said before, with the population growing massively, our resources are going to be, you know, really depleting at a rapid rate. Um, they say by 2020 we're going to be up to a world population of 10 billion. Um, it's going to continue to do so, and we really need to work towards finding ways of feeding those um, billions of people. Um, one of the other big things is the recycling of consumer products. Uh, I, I just find it amazing that we're still using um, like things that aren't biodegradable, so like the plastics from crisp wrappers, and also you, you sort of walk down the street, and I always think that whilst there's litter bins, there's never enough, and there's never enough recycling bins. So people, if they have a can of coke and they're drunk, they, they always think, oh, I'll just go for the bin rather than a recycling place. So, you know, if we really sort of hone that, it'll be um, a big factor that could uh, decrease our waste substantially. So in order for us not to abuse uh, small areas of land by overconsumption, so when um, corporations that produce food, you know, they really sort of produce a, a, an incredible amount of food on a small area of land, and it really drains the nutrients out of the land and it's, the only real way to get it without fertilizer is to leave it um, fallow and to let the nutrients you know, go back naturally. Um, so Heinz says that protect the local globally. So you know, we really need to start looking at rather than globalization at localization. So we really need to start, for example, within Bristol, start really using the fishing areas within Bristol, but um, as well as sort of farming and agriculture, um, but to make sure that the, um, the resource levels are manageable and will replenish quicker too. So there's unnecessary consumption that occurs every day, and that's mainly because of the capitalist society that we live in. You know, we're always wanting the next big thing. Uh, one of the biggest things that I find is. Um, within technology's mobile phones. Every single day there's a new mobile phone coming out. And I believe there was one by Motorola uh, that they had as a concept where you had a mainframe on your phone but you had little components that you could take out, put in, rather than... Because the, the thing when a phone bro breaks is that it's only one circuit that breaks and yet it's thrown away. Um, so if we can sort of 
decompartmentalise our phones into little areas um, that we can sort of take out that part, replace it or fix it um, and then just sort of move on. The same is with um, needless packaging, so as I said before with plastic, but you've got multi-packs of crisps that are so much larger than what you, you need them to be. Um, although I probably understand that it's for transportation reasons, leaving room so that the crisps don't break. So, my policies. So first and foremost, I would change the education system to search for people's talents and passions as they grow up. Um, so we could do that both as a young age as well as an old age, but it's mainly just looking at um, teaching people to rather um, obey to the laws of education. So they always say that education is a microcosm of society, so that you're always taught to obey the teacher. So you never really critically engage with the information that is put in front of you. You're always just told to regurgitate it with an exam. And I always find that coursework, in some extent, is a lot better because you're always engaging with the information that you are dealing with, and you're rationally, um, you know, comparing two sides of the arguments rather than in an exam you're pressured under three hours to remember as much as you possibly can and it's probably not coherent at all. So I really want to sort of emphasise the fact that everyone does have those intellectual capabilities where that they can find their passions and you know really develop on um, their skills. I also think that we should be teaching subjects such as sociology, psychology and citizenship from an early age. Um, I always think that uh, Maths, English and Science should be the core subjects for primary school, but we should also be teaching kids to be part of society. So rather than, um, I mean, history sort of does that in a sense, and so does RE. But we really need to be looking at how, what position they are in within society and how they can help develop it too. So I want to create more nationalised business, uh, mainly because the private sector is going um, a at the moment, and you know I, I feel as though we should emphasise our um, prospects on infrastructure, welfare, new technologies, and really be in the forefront of the world, and sort of like Japan was many years ago in technology, and just keep on developing and using people's talents because we've got. So, so many people are unemployed at the moment and they've got talents which they can, which can be used. So I really just want to get everyone out of um, unemployment and just sort of apply the skills that they have because no one is useless. And I firmly believe that I believe that everyone has skills that you know they feel passionate about but yet the world doesn't facilitate it. So, as I said, uh, such businesses will be in sectors such as science and technology, public services and others, so really looking towards sort of transportation um, and just general things to really improve our society rather than it being restricted by money. Again, I want to give everyone a basic income to start off with because we've got all this who have our people um, benefit cheats, you know, they just stay on benefits forever and ever. Whereas if we give people a basic living income, then, you know, they're sorted then. They'll be able to feed themselves, they'll be able to house themselves. And you normally get when people um, are free uh, to engage more with the society. I believe that there was a study done by three MIT economists, whereby they started looking at incentives and what they did was, um, within universities, they gave three levels of incentives to children, so, oh, sorry, um, students, where it was $25 for a good reward, um, a good grade, and then there was $50 for a good grade, and then it was $100 for a good grade. So this is three groups of people, and if they got good grades, they would um, get certain levels of money. And it was actually found that the people at the top um, performed the worst. So it shows that not the biggest incentive in the world isn't going to make people perform. And whilst it was found that sort of basic motor um, skills, such as kicking the ball or anything like that, that did improve as you went on. But when it got to rudimental cognitive skills and above, they did worse. 
And what they did after that, they went to Mumbai and applied the same thing. So $100 for the best people. And obviously, um, the cost of living there, it's $100 means a lot more to them than say people in America. And yet they continue to find the same results. So, I want to get everyone involved within the process of learning ideas and change. Like you find that so many people within big government are making these decisions that not everyone's going to benefit from. So, as I said before, the localization of sustainability, I believe that we should really sort of look at the local councils and what they want to achieve, but we also want to be looking as a whole. And so you've got to have the right balance. Um, so, you know, I want to work towards becoming a self-sufficient, sustainable society by implementing those technologies that will undoubtedly help us change. Uh, you know, sort of just just things that will make us make our lives a lot easier than they are currently now. Um, another thing is, and I always imagine myself, um, say, if I am lucky enough to sort of get to a debate of wanting to become. Uh, Prime Minister, and one of the things is, and it's not going to be a forceful policy, but I want you to like every day just talk to a random stranger, just get to know them. You know, everyone's got such an amazing story to tell that you know I always find it really interesting that when you look out in society, you know, like looking out there, and just, everyone's got their own little lives, and it's just something that's really enriching towards my life because. I know that people are just going about their day and living their lives and I think it would be really good if we just sort of got to know each other a bit more rather than thinking, oh it's us and them. So again, obviously like one of the focuses of my slides during the present was the monetary system. It doesn't work at the moment, you know, it, we are running on debt and we are going to continue to do so and this bubble is going to burst at some point so we really need to reform the current monetary system and then i hope in years to come to eventually move away from it um, sort of either through i believe it's a mutual credit system so rather than gain money you gain sort of points and you go up a scale and you go down to the minor scale and you're sort of doing little jobs for people in your neighborhood and it's been implemented um, in a lot of areas across the world, and it's been really, really positive. Uh, so, I really want to change our stance within the globe to neutral. You know, I really don't think that, you know, a lot of the wars that have been happening recently, particularly in Iraq, you know, we've been earning money on disaster capitalism. So, we've been destroying their state, and then we've been getting paid for rebuilding it. And it's just, it's crazy. So I really want to start showing that we are a neutral state and we just want to collaborate with people and, you know, just really be that focal point within the world so that people look at us and say, actually, that is the best way of working. So I believe these are the kind of policies, along with, I've got just so many ideas, I just really want to sort of get people to understand who, what I'm about because I'm just, like I know from my campaign, I don't really explain myself, um, which you know I'm uh, kind of a little bit disappointed about. But this is what I'm doing today. So these are the kind of policies that I want to really work towards, and I believe that it would benefit everyone, including um, those that are rich, anyways. Right, question time. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone got a question? Yeah, you mentioned about uh, technology being good and plants. Do you think it's led to consumerism, or is it something else that's led to that? Um, I, that's a really good question. I, I feel as though it's really the system that we currently live in. So it's the whole capitalism society of, oh, I want that product, and as soon as I get that, I can throw away. I think I read something like, uh, kids are given presents at Christmas, and I believe two thirds of them uh, in the new year get thrown away. So these kids are just like, I want that mummy, I want that daddy, and then they get given it, and then that's it, boredom sets in, and they no longer want it. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, I feel as though, like I said, you know, we're adaptable beings, but we're also uh, very impressionable. You know, if we see people having something, we're like, oh, I want that, I want that. 
Um, whereas if we start working towards a society where you don't necessarily crave those things, then you will start to um, look for other pleasantries within life. Because I think it's almost like a fast that you're trying to find happiness by buying these things rather than um, sort of, you know, enjoying yourself and learning about things. Because I, perhaps I'm just a geek, but I just absolutely love like learning about new things every single day. I think it really enriches my life, um, and I'm sure it will enrich yours too. Uh, any others? No worries if not. <laughs> uh, you talk about like, people and everyone involved in society. Yeah. How would you implement something like that? How would you encourage people to get every single person to... Um, well, uh, the way I see it is, like, as I said, I, I don't want to save the world. I don't want it to automatically be like, everyone come together. I really want to show that the UK is a brilliant size to start it. Um, but I want to, first of all, see that everyone's on an equal playing field and just really start to um, show people that we are all similar, we're all the same, we're all going through the same thing. And I believe that once people start to show that everyone is actually good and everyone wants to get to know your story, you know, you'll want to help out too. Because there are so many cases in the world where people do things for free. Like, the operating system Linux is given away to free, and that's used in the majority of businesses worldwide. Uh, it's the same with sort of like the polio vaccine. That's given away for free. The internet, one of the greatest gifts that we've ever had was given away for free, although there is legislation, and I think they're really trying to get people to start. I know you pay for an internet provider, but in terms of it, the internet is free. Like, what you can put onto it, what you can take off to it of it, it's free. So, um, I believe, you know, I, I don't, what I want to happen as well is that I'm not the only, I'm not going to be one of these people that says we've got to do it this way. I believe, like, through scientific and rational thought, if I'm proved wrong by something, then I'll quite happily admit it and move on and, you know, really try and start to work towards those sorts of things. Um, so, yeah, I want everyone to get involved and I want everyone to sort of improve their society as well because it's not just a few small it's not a small group society it's everyone's society so if you i feel as though a lot of people do actually want to put in so, um, any more no okay <laughs> uh, so um just the last thing if anyone wants any academic references I just wanted to co cover, my, cover myself because uh, I'm sure that there's going to be someone that's just like, well, oh, I want to make sure that um, you've referenced it. Um, and there's my email if you ever want to uh, contact me. If anyone's interested in doing some postgraduate funding, Andros, <laughs> <laughs> student funders are working way. Well, you know, it's it's quite empowering for people to like believe in you and. Um, you know, you really sort of put yourself out there and you do get a lot of positive responses. So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, let's try and change society for the better. <laughs>